Well, boys and girls, it seems... I don't know what it seems, but I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing. Didn't expect <laughs> Bay Area Naz to go the way it did. Bay Area just beat up on the defending champs. Like, oh my goodness, I, I don't think I expected that at all. But anyway, welcome back to the channel this week. And indoor football is ready to go. And we got a lot to talk about. Let, let's let's start with the NAL. Let's let, let's start there. Um, now, of course, you know the scores for the games. Uh, the San Antonio Empire game was a classic. You know, a classic. I know people are mad about the whole you know penalty thing, but again, it's it was the correct call. Can't have you know the jack move around like that. So you know, yeah, sure there was some other stuff as well, but I mean it is what it is. And then Jacksonville beat Fayetteville. Fayetteville, they have the LA Kiss Field. Nice looking broadcast, pretty decent. Nobody was there. Even Chris Sigfried was like, "Where is everybody at?" <laughs> so it's like you know. People in Fayetteville, they, they know. They know. They know something. Not everything, but, you know, the big the big thing is that, you know, it's a whole lot of Antonio Brown drama. It's been the thing that's just been... That's just been kind of circulating and continuing to go for the last couple weeks and it just will not stop because I mean you get you, again you get security guards you know trying to kick him off the field you get Mike Quarta, Matt Woods and Jeff LeBac just leaving the front office and then Antonio Brown swooping in saying he has 95% of the ownership and the Bond Schillers with the remaining 5% you know, just, it was a nasty, nasty fight that got on the social media. I mean, it was just, it's just been a rough, rough couple of weeks for the Empire. As far as the off-field shenanigans, you know, are concerned, there's the whole thing. The child support thing, a judge was like, I, uh, he has paid his child support. We're, we're issuing a warrant for your arrest, Mr. A.B. You know, it's it seems like even Quarter sold his, you know, ownership stake for like a single dollar, which is insane to me. You could just buy, hey, I, have, I have a stake in a IFL, NAL team for a dollar, you know. It's crazy, but I mean, at least the standings, you know, look kind of nice. You know, San Antonio Gunslingers right at the top, three and zero. The Gunslingers barely squeaking out of these games, though. And then Jacksonville humbled the Fayetteville Mustangs. So, again, um, the IFL right now. Again, it, the the big thing that you know was announced it was the deal with CBS Sports Network that. We'll have the next three title games on the network. We don't know if it will be exclusive or not. Todd Ryan wouldn't give us any details on that. Uh, as far as exclusivity, I hope the games still stream on YouTube regardless because, I mean, I'm not going to go out of my way to find CBS Sports Network and neither are a lot of you that watch the IFL. So it seems like the IFL can add other regular season or playoff games to this deal if need be. And again, uh, really, this is the first time since AFL 2.0 that really some bigger exposure. You know, stadium's cool and all, but this is a little bit bigger than stadium. I mean, kind of the same. It's kind of roughly equal, but there were games on CBS Sports Network, you know, during AFL 2.0 days. Um, Iowa's got the new field. Looks very nice. Defense could not stop Tulsa. However, Bain debuted 
and yet the defense still couldn't stop Tulsa. Tulsa got their first ever win. And then probably the trade of the year, Nanny Croft, Aaron Aiken, they go, you know, they go from San Diego to Duke City, and now San Diego has Nate Davis. Didn't th- didn't think he'd see that, you know, a few weeks ago. And you look at the standings now. Again, it's still Frisco's to lose in the East, but Quad City and is gaining, and the and the other three teams really, you know, Mass Sioux Falls, Green Bay, Green Bay and Sioux Falls split the past couple weeks. So really thought Green Bay would get the second victory, get us get a second straight victory against Sioux Falls, but that did not happen. And then the West is, you know. Still a dire crapshoot right now. Like, what is going on here? Like, you could pick your poison as to who you want out of the Western Conference in the IFL. Tucson lost, you know, Bay Area 2-2, two and two, Naz 2-2, two and two, Vegas 2-2, two and two, San Diego 2-3, two and three, Arizona 2-3. and three. Keep mind, no Mike, uh, yeah, no Drew Powell, you know, and the Duke City. Two and three. Crazy, crazy endings, really, to a good chunk of games. You know, all 14 teams were in action. A good chunk of games had crazy endings. You know, Mass Quad City was crazy. I, you know, Iowa, uh, Tulsa was crazy. Tucson, San Diego. I mean, just, just, just craziness throughout. And then the CIF, it, 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 the big thing, the other big thing, really, there were three big things coming into this Sunday night. The third one was the Topeka Tropics. Unfortunately for the Tropics, their owner, Josh Barr, has said some really, really insensitive things, some things that you shouldn't say, you shouldn't be calling people. Some of these names, none of which I will repeat, but the dirty laundry has been aired out, thankfully. And now Bob Scott and the league have stepped in to take over whatever's going on out there in Topeka. Again, Topeka wasn't even supposed to return, but they were able to via, you know, the help of these uh, help of these owners. And now it's looking like a war zone out there. You have players, you know, even just... Today, you know, I saw a player for Topeka Post that, you know, Bar kind of, you know, did something to get the police called on him. So that's insane to me. So, like, something's got to give. And Topeka also, by the way, has not won a game in CIF play. No, we're not talking about the non-league games. We're talking CIF play. And by the way, those those non-league games should stop. There's no reason for Billings, or not Billings, Gillette to have a non-league game in the middle of the season. And there's like two more non-league games that are going to happen. One of them mean next week. Oh, good God. I'm tired. I'm tired of CIF, you know, and their non-league games. But that's, that's neither here nor there. What about playoffs? Sioux City and Salina have clinched. I mean, that really doesn't matter when... Six of the eight teams make the playoffs. So, really, it's all about can Rapid City win enough games? Can Topeka even win a game? Because otherwise, it'll be Billings and Southwest Kansas. I think the playoffs are mostly set in the CIF. Again, it's just can Rapid City or Topeka win a game? And then everybody else, everybody else, because I don't feel like going going through like 90 different slides just to go through this, you know. And so um, the AWC, Idaho beat up on Wenatchee. The AFL name, the AFL 3.0, by the way, Tracy Lehnan, who was a former, you know, NFL executive. He's now the COO of GLA. I, I made a mistake last week, um, you know, Ohio, Southern Michigan, they played a game on that Sunday. Uh, Lee didn't say anything about the game. I know it's on the website now. Uh, there's also the Pat game, you know, that the Blitz beat. 
this week. Can't find any footage. I'm not even going to try and look for it. The AL2. You see the scores right there. Doesn't really matter. And then the Mississippi Raiders, again, the AIFA, has technically kicked off. Um, the Raiders play uh, the Alabama somethings. The Alabama somethings. I don't know what they were, like the Empires. Not the Empire, you know, not the Alabama Empire, the team we know that exists, but like the Empires. Uh, like if they had the move to Paul Battle Arena, smaller arena, the nets were crooked. The end zones, I think, were Salinas. And I think the field was the and, You know, um, somebody pointed out to me that I think that's Kate Fear's old field. Y'all remember Kate Fear, right? This was before I, you know, started, you know, doing this. So I, 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 I do remember Kate Fear existing because I've seen some old games of Kate Fear. Or at least bits and pieces. So there's that. That's basically everything else. Um, really the three big things this week. Again, the CBS Sports Network deal for the IFL. Big positive. Big positive for the IFL. Um, really, really good thing for them. The NAL, unfortunately, is going to continue to get bad rep. And, he, and Chris Siegfried did not entirely help his case. Um, you know, today he was at the game in Fayetteville. He didn't entirely help his case today. Uh, you know, and like the NAL knows they just got to get better at basically every aspect. And the negative press with Antonio Brown is definitely not helping. And then the CIF, of course, probably, and I, I say this every year, you know, I've said this like every, the last three years, CIF can do great things the off season, you know, like they brought everybody back somehow. But then the, 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 the season itself becomes a total shit show. And this, this right here is absolutely asinine, absolutely terrifying you know, result. Topeka, who knows what will happen to the tropics? Because I certainly don't know. The league's taking over them now, but something's got to give. Until next Sunday night, when we do a little doubleheader, which I don't want to do a doubleheader, but I'm going to have to because we got to talk college cross again. And we got to talk more indoor arena football. Let's see what this week has in store for us. I hope it's nothing like la like this past week. I really hope not. Take care, everybody. I'll see you next Sunday. <laughs>